Welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast, where every week, Danny and Mauda Vega discuss topics that help families live a healthy and active lifestyle with their little ones, including nutrition and training, peaceful parenting, education, and mindset. To stay up to date, make sure to hit subscribe on this podcast and check out the blog at www.fatfuel.family. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram at dannyvega.ms, at Fatfueled Mom, and at Fatfueled Kids, and Fatfueled Family on YouTube. Enjoy the show. Everybody, I just wanted to take a quick break from my podcast to share something with you. So it's a new year, it's 2022. And if you've been paying attention, one of the things I've been talking about is this year, now that thankfully we have in-person events coming back, I'm gonna be speaking on stage and I'm really gonna be focusing on two things and that is community and accountability. All right, a lot of us have goals and a lot of us are trying to hit our head against the walls and do the same thing we've done in the past, you know, but here's something that I think a lot of people are missing. And in this new world that we're living in, things are different. A lot of people are not paying attention to the stress that they're going through. They're, they're just trying to sweep it under the rug. And unfortunately, myself included, because I went through this, guys, we have a lot of unhealthy coping mechanism. And a lot of the time, we are disconnected completely. This is why we started our Fat Fueled Physique group coaching. We've been getting really good feedback. Now, the good thing is that we have three different levels available. The basic membership will give you access to our True Coach app. And the cool thing about this is that every single workout with the exercises in it, you'll be able to see the videos attached to the exercises so you'll never be lost on what to do. And these are custom workouts that you'll get monthly based on your monthly goals as they change. Now the plus is really great because the plus will add custom meal plans and macros with macro changes every single week, even how to change your meal plan to adjust your macros. And now the VIP puts you in our VIP Telegram chat and that also gives you access to our bi-weekly Zoom calls. We do different subjects every two weeks. We've covered everything from habit stacking to supplements. And so I just wanted to let you guys know about that. We'd love to have you. Make sure that you check it out, www.fatfueled.family slash shop, and you'll see all the options there. Welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Vega, and today I'm alone uh, because we got some issues right now. Desmond um, has a little cut that Mauda's taking care of, but super excited uh, about this guest that we have this week because we were introduced by a mutual friend, Brad Kearns, but let me first tell you guys all about him. Our guest this week is Jake Steiner. 20 years ago, Jake began a journey to reverse his negative 5.00 diopter myopia. It took a great deal of experimenting and trial and error to apply theoretical concepts found in clinical journals and peer-reviewed studies, but he eventually managed to get back his natural 2020 eyesight. Over the years, Jake cataloged the many tools, resources, and experiences that made his myopia recovery a reality. Much of it exists now as a part of this resource to help and share and connect with fellow myopes. It's called uh, nmyopia.org so that more of us could get our natural eyesight back. Welcome to the show, Jake Steiner. What's up, man? Thanks for having me, Danny. I appreciate it. Hey, can I say this? Brad, who introduced us, he used to wear glasses for both distance vision and he needed glasses to read too. So he couldn't see either direction, like close (laughs) or far. He doesn't need glasses anymore. He literally dude asked that's him. so cool about the about the yeah because i i saw that you did um a video shoot we might might as well go out of order this is this is our show <laughs> so uh i i noticed you did a you did a a video on a specific um brand of like really expensive um eye drops for the for the reading glasses stuff um w- what's that all about is that dude. is there anything to that no nah, man I- so much of this stuff. <laughs> Just and another you know this pharmacia. It is, of course. Like the, the people that listen to your show, the people that get into keto, the people that figure all this stuff out. So much of the stuff that's being sold to you as a subscription is is symptom treatment and is stuff you didn't need in the first place. They don't tell you how to fix the problem. And instead they put you yep. on this monthly pay every month for thing. Those eye drops, they cost like 80 bucks a month. They're for people that need reading oh glasses gosh. for like 50 and over. Yeah, 80 bucks a month. And... What's in them is a, a, a glaucoma medication. And if you just buy that, which is the same active ingredient, you pay one-tenth the price. So instead of 80 bucks That's a month, crazy. it's eight bucks. And it still doesn't work great. 
so <laughs> dude i'm glad you said that because like before we got on the air i was talking about how my son he's got some like cut or something and i'm like okay the last thing we're gonna do the, the whole thing today is avoid going through the you know the the typical route that most people go is like well we got to go somewhere and go have someone do something and then just like nowadays unfortunately now those I, i'm sure plenty in the audience agree and, and some disagree um but at the end of the day we'd rather one avoid problems than than have them occur in the first place but um when something's small uh and and we just want to treat it and and don't have any issues and just observe i'd rather do that man because you go somewhere and it's automatically they pull out the big hammer and everything's a nail so um so i totally agree with you man so well let's let's get back to the original first uh question that we always lead with what is the most critical problem you're currently trying to solve did you ask me this before we started and i'm like i'm gonna look terrible because I, I'm so I'm an investor and stock trader I used to be. I'm kind of retired, and I got lucky because I was in this 20 years ago. So I'm just a spoiled brat, and literally my biggest problems are how do I fill <laughs> my life with like interesting experiences and adventures, and how do I turn out the day I die that I go I did it right. Like that's my, yeah, and in this time of like screen awesome. stuff, like one. I know, and it's kind of weird because. Today, like actually, we're just on a road trip. This whole podcast setup is just rigged together because I took a little tiny scooter and drove it halfway through the country just to do something and get away from screens. Like the, the screen addiction and the temptation of just being on those freaking things is unreal. And that sounds silly because lots of people have bigger problems than that. But for me, it's literally how do I make life better and it, in some small way contribute something. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I, I know what you're saying. I think a lot of people, they it's there's so many parallels here that I'm just like my mind is blown because I'm thinking about how people are, are so myopic and they're always looking at just what's in front of them, like how to pay the next bill, how to do. And it's interesting, I found because I came from a world I was a medical device rep. I made a ton of money and then I started our business like four years ago, you know, and and I did it. We had just built a house, you know, um, obviously I saved for a year, but part of why I did it is because I wanted to teach my two sons that it doesn't matter how old you are, how many um, obligations you have, you need to live your life and, and, and you know, you only get one life. And um, so what you're talking about is kind of what, what we tell people every single week, man, that, um, and it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people they're like, must be nice for you, must be, you know, it's like, it's, it's not that, it's, it's not, because I, I have problems now that I didn't have before, but I'd rather have those problems because of how full my life is, you know, the amount of time I get to sp spend with my family, be around my family. Um, so, of course, what you talk about with the screen thing, we're talking about that all the time, you know, we have to be very on our side, we have to be very um, guarded of our time. And so because our business is online, we have rules set up for ourselves. So we don't even look at a screen until about like an hour and a half into the morning after we've done all of our morning routines. So I, I don't think that's a, a weird problem at all, man. Yeah, and, and it must be nice, dude. I lived in my car. I quit a six figure job and moved into my car voluntarily so I didn't spend the money on rent so I could hire one more sales guy. So, you know what I mean? Like you take chances and sometimes you lose like a shower in the gym. Like I had enough money to pay rent, but I'm like, that's, you know, that's like a commission based salary deal. So it's it. a lot of it is like the chances you take. And I talk about myopia, I talk about short sightedness. Nobody in the world needs glasses. Right. And, and those things, the moment you put those on, they start limiting your your view of yourself. Like now you become this kind of person who can't see well. And, and people don't mind, like people don't care. Like everybody who listens to this, who wears glasses, like what, what's the big deal? I pop in contacts, I pop in glasses. Psychologically, you're telling your brain every single day, I'm not quite right. It limits your sports performance on all kinds of levels. I can talk a lot about that, but I don't wanna go super long. It limits your view of yourself. It limits your social interactions. You seem a little bit weird and awkward, just a tiny little bit by being stuck behind the lenses. And what you think you can accomplish in your life shrinks. Like I, I, 
I paraglide. I lived in Nepal for a while paragliding. I kite surf in Vietnam usually before this whole thing went down. And those are all things when I was wearing needed glasses, I thought I'd never do. Right. So it's I don't want to overload wow, anybody man. with this, but it's definitely like you don't realize how much that those things that you're wearing, whether it's contacts or glasses, are setting you back from who you could be. I mean, that sounds corny, but I think yeah. that's true. Uh, again, no, dude, I, I'm all about it. I mean, I, again, I see the parallels with life. Like, I, I remember at the beginning of everything that happened the last two years, um, I was with a guy who's like a mentor to me. This guy's been in prison. This guy's just a beast. And, um, and he's been through it. And, um, and I remember just talking to him about this. And he's like, you know what? I don't receive that. I just don't. You know, like I, that whole that whole thing, I don't receive it. And, you know, people will say, well, you're, you're just you're making light of something. You know, you you know, th this can happen to anybody. You, you know, anybody can get. But honestly, there is a connection between your thoughts and, and the reality that you live. And you saying that to me makes total sense. You know, I, I, I can just see how people are just automatically throttling themselves and adjusting their life's trajectory because of these little things and and myopia might be one of them but there may be five million ways that they're doing it so how cool would it be with this just one approach to one thing that people can learn that you know with a little bit of work and a little bit of don't listen to you know conventional wisdom even though like what we're going to talk about you have actual research that backs it up so that's the cool part the knowledge is there unfortunately the the people that are sharing the knowledge are not you know not doing a good enough job but obviously there's there's reasons for that so let's talk about this so on on the website you break down pseudo myopia which is due to strain and progressive myopia which is a lens created stimulus first i want to cover the formula the former because i i can't even begin to imagine how bad things have gotten like in the last two decades um you know with with all the the rise of screen so what can people do and and what resources do you offer to reduce pseudo myopia like what what you know because that's i'm assuming a lot of that's going to be due to like screens yeah it, a lot of it's due to screens so myopia for the people that i mean i'm terrible at this stuff introducing it correctly near nearsightedness or short-sightedness so you need glasses or contacts to see clearly the distance right so you take them off, you can't see clear far away. And the first thing I always recommend when you hear about some crazy new topic from some dude on the internet, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an optometrist, is Google Scholar. Scholar.google.com, Google search engine just for clinical research, right? Like it doesn't mean it's the truth, but it's science. So if you don't wanna see some dude's website selling you a thing, you just wanna see peer reviewed clinical science, scholar.google.com, type in pseudomyopia. And this is interesting because if you go to the optometrist and you need glasses, they say, and you ask them why that is, they're going to tell you it's genetic. And science will tell you it's not genetic. It's super weird. It's honestly, when I found this out first, I'm like, that is just like conspiracy theory level stuff, but absolutely not. So scald.google.com, you type in pseudomyopia, you get tens of thousands of results of, again, just peer-reviewed clinical science explaining that your eyesight first got bad because there's a muscle in the front of the eye. It's called the ciliary. It, it controls focus. It's like a camera lens. Like there's a flexible lens in the front of your eye and a circular muscle makes that lens bulge when you look at something up close. And the closer you look, the tighter that lens gets, right? Like it's a, it's a super interesting mechanism, well understood by science, well observed. And the muscles relax when you look at 20 feet, six meters away. And the closer you look, the tighter it gets. You, you kind of see where this is going. The longer you look at something up close, the longer that muscle stays tight. Screen distance, super tight. Mm. If you do this for hours and hours and hours and hours, every single day, eventually you get a muscle spasm. Pseudomyopia is a ciliary muscle spasm. The focusing muscle of your eye doesn't fully relax. So like a camera that's stuck kind of in intermediate distance mode, it's blurry at a distance. Your eye did the same thing. So it's not a genetic defect. It's not an illness of any kind. It's not a disease, certainly. It's just a muscle that got stuck because of overuse. So the, the issue then becomes that that muscle isn't able to contract and expand with precision 
to like focus and and get you know go in and out as as well as before right yeah so basically it needs to be totally relaxed for the lens to flatten for you to have good distance vision right because the retina is in the back of the eye and the lens is in the front and the lens shapes so depending on the distance you look you always have a clear like the light is always focused on the retina in the back of the eye just kind of like a camera it's super similar and it just doesn't completely relax you never get the lens back into full distance mode and that's all it is like when you first went to the optometrist and they said yeah you just need a little minus one diopter whatever all you had actually happening was a little bit of a stuck muscle clearly understood by science and the dude selling you glasses by the way five thousand percent profit margin on average like the lenses in your glasses cost two to five dollars with all the coatings like this stuff is all profit so and i'm not saying they're doing it on purpose i'm not saying anybody's it's not a conspiracy certainly but they're trained to go we don't know why it's genetic here's some stuff that they sell for a ridiculous markup it's a hundred billion dollar year industry that they're making money off telling you not telling you it's a muscle spasm but telling you ah, it's genetic we don't know and you need these glasses for life wow man all right so so what about with the screens this is this is crazy dude because like i i i find it so interesting that i keep finding these things with everything in my life <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> there's so much out there that that um it's simpler right like just with the keto thing it is simpler yeah. Right? It, you don't need all this medication yeah. to control all your high blood pressure and this and that. Like, eat right, you know? But that the simple solution yeah. doesn't make any money and people got to pay the bills, right? Like, you went to freaking medical school and this yeah. is what you learned. Like, here's a pill. Like, you're in the medical device sales field. Like, you know how this stuff works. Simple, so many oh, times. Oh, man, is the right there was answer. so much waste. <laughs> yeah, okay. I remember I used to sell something, uh, man. I used to sell a product. First of all, none of it they made, they didn't make any of it like sterilizable. It was always disposable. It was always plastic. So, which is which is dumb because you could have made any, a lot of the devices that I had, something that you could sterilize. And I used to sell something. This was like at the end when I was, I, my eyes were open and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You know, it was like a, a $500 paddle. It looked like a paddle, okay? And this is like, they call it a vaginal positioning device. It's something that, Basically, you insert and then on the inside, it makes it easy for people. It gives you a flat surface to uh, to be able to like stitch on the inside of, of a woman's like in the inside. And um, and that was 500 bucks a pop every single time, you know, like and it's just like, oh, man, I just uh, that it, it kind of makes me angry. But at the same time in life, we always have a choice. And that's the best part is that we have a choice once we learn stuff. Um, now, what are we gonna do with that choice? What are we gonna do with the idea that instead of taking 20 minutes to go and pop in and out of a store, go pick up your, your new lenses, actually going through the process of the things that you talk about, um, which may take a little bit more time, but they're so much more rewarding and you're so much more empowered because you have all this knowledge that of, processes that are built within your body to even address the craziest of circumstances because i know like long time ago we didn't we didn't have the screens we don't we don't have the issues that we that we have now but that's going on in every single field of health like when the incandescent light bulb came out we automatically lost like boom an hour and a half of sleep a night something like that it was it was just and that's the incandescent light bulb you know, like <laughs> that's like what, like nine lumen or something crazy. And now we're like we have these blue lights everywhere and we're disrupting our circadian rhythm. So um, anyways, let, let's let's get back to this. So, you know, you talk about a few relatively simple ways to address progressive myopia. So the typical approach is what we've mentioned. You know, people go to the optometrist, they get measured, they get prescribed glasses or contact lenses. And then as time passes, their eyesight quote unquote, gets worse. And then the prescriptions renewed, you get a new lens. Um, how does what you found in your research and then your personal experience, because this is a I don't want to shortchange what you've done, because you did a lot of tinkering and, you know, exploration and discovery of yourself. Um, kind of talk about like the road that you personally took. And and, you know, what have you seen because you, your website gets a ton of views, you know, you've your videos have 
there's you know ton, tons of views on your videos and stuff so um talk about your approach like from a solution standpoint first of all the progressive myopia so nobody knows what it is it's i mean from people listening to this it's when you go back to the optometrist a year later and they go oh oh you need stronger glasses every time you go back if you wear glasses you're nodding because you're like yep you don't go to that place and they're like no no you're fine it's worse every time it is genius it's a genius it's a hundred billion dollar year industry and by the way prescriptions are not prescriptions they're clear curved piece of plastic right like you can buy over-the-counter pain medication that is a a zillion times more dangerous than putting a piece of plastic that's clear in front of your eyes. It became prescriptions because they spent millions of dollars in lobbying to make it that. So people couldn't buy that stuff for 10 bucks. Like that was the whole game of this. And not teaching you how to measure yourself. Measuring your eyes is super simple at home. You don't need to go to an optometrist for that, right? I, and before I get all into your question, super short, I believe in eye checkups. Like I like, modern medical science is awesome, right? Like I love... I mean, I'm not, for the sake of time, I won't, but there's awesome stuff that you can get tests for, blood panels, like there's, if you have immediately life-threatening issues, modern medical science is amazing. Diagnostics are amazing. Like, I'm not against, go to an ophthalmologist every year, get an eye checkup, right? By all means, like, I'm not saying don't do that. But myopia and the lens selling business is a giant scheme. What happens is, I'm trying to keep that super short, right? The eye is a fluid-filled ball. And because it's fluid filled, it never stays perfectly round. So the space between the retina where the light focuses and the lens always kind of varies a bit. So it is a built in system that keeps its length correct. And that's a little bit more complicated. It checks where the light hits on the retina in front or behind and it adjusts itself throughout your life. When you're a baby or hyperopic, you can't see clearly up close. The eyeball adjusts and it keeps doing that as long as you live. And Glasses disrupt that process. What they do is you put these lenses in front of your eyes, meant for distance vision. This is stuff that was invented in the 16th century. Like this is some old shit, right? You put them in front of your eye, meant for distance vision. They never tell you don't wear those for screen use. If you never wear them for screen use, your eyesight would never get worse. But you wear them up close. And the interesting things that happen is called hyperopic defocus. You can look it up on Google Scholar. A little bit of the light hits behind the retina. So that built-in mechanism in your eye goes, well, shit, I'm too short. And it starts elongating to adjust itself to be correct again because of the glasses. You wear those glasses during close-up where you don't need them. They move light back in the eye. Now your eyeball elongates. What happens when your eyeball elongates is progressive myopia. Your, your vision gets worse because everything's even more out of focus now. But that's not an illness or a oh disease or gosh, genetic I condition. Totally it's it. it's purely your eye adjusting a perfectly healthy eye adjusting to the to the input from the lens so the optometrist knows that when you come back a year later they can sell you stronger glasses a quarter of the opter it's nothing it's just a tiny little bit but that means you got to throw the old ones away right and you're going to spend 200 bucks again and it's going to be 192 dollars of profit and you walk out of there and they're going to see you again in a year that's that's progressive myopia it's Axial elongation, the elongation of the eyeball because of the lens. It's a subscription model that keeps you coming back. The more often you come back, the worse your eyesight will get because the more they sell you stronger glasses. The prevention of this is incredibly simple. Number one, don't go to the optometrist. Go to an ophthalmologist for eye checkups. Ignore the myopia advice. Spend more time outside and at a distance. You print an eye chart or buy it on Amazon. You hang it up at home. See what you can see on a nice weekend after a hike or you went to the gym right? You ate well, you're not stressed, you slept well, you haven't been on any screens yet. What can you read? Then spend four hours binging Netflix. Try to read that eye chart again. Your vision is going to be noticeably worse. Muscle stuck. Option A is you go to the optometrist, 100% they will say you glasses after the Netflix binge. Or you go for a hike. You sleep, you wake up the next day, you don't plan screens, you go for a hike. Look at the eye chart again. You can see fine. Like that is the, right? Like it's the eye chart is like a scale. Scale tells you your weight. The eye chart tells you how's your eyesight today. And it's going to be different today than tomorrow. In artificial light, it's going to be worse. If you had a fight with somebody, significant other, it's going to be worse. If you didn't sleep well, it's going to be worse. Conversely, if you eat well, right? Like if you don't get insulin spikes, it'll be better. 
natural light, it'll be better. You spend more time not looking at screens, it'll be better. And it fluctuates, right? So don't get strong on glasses is my short answer or my long answer to your question is don't go back there. When you wear those glasses and your vision seems worse is because you spend too much time in front of screens, right? You've got to slowly rebalance your screen addiction. It's not going to stop. We love screens. A bigger screen further away. The muscle's less tight. You're, you're going to have less of that. Don't buy stronger glasses. Work on your habits till your vision improves back to that level. You're ne never going to need strong glasses. Dude, you are, <laughs> you're like a prophet sent from God to me. You just like, for real, dude. Cause like, I just, I just think about this stuff, man. And I'm just like, this is power right here for, for, for anybody listening, man. I, I hope you guys are excited as I am. Um, you know, I'm with you hundred percent. Like I, I love science, diagnostics, all of that good stuff. I get my blood tested, but I go through a place like private MD labs where I don't have to be, you know, beholden to a, a primary care physician who's not only going to not give me my results, they're going to hold <laughs> on to them. And then they're going to they're going to make me come back in for another consult. Right. And then they're going to tell me that one factor on a whole sheet of things that, you know, not even looking at the whole picture, one factor is out of out of sync. And because of that, we need to start our 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 road on the on the train to you know uh, prescriptions so it's like okay we're gonna fix that fact and then yeah it's all it yeah. is i call they it are, it's a it's subscription based business 100 percent. and yeah i get my blood test directly from a lab because otherwise you just my parents are both mds fun fact and i won't even get into it but my mom hates pills and she's like lots of things can be fixed naturally she wouldn't allow a freezer in the house because she was like don't freeze stuff and my dad loves pills. Like, so they're polar opposite. He's like, these things are magical. They're fixed. Wow, anything. interesting. And she's like, yeah. So it's for sure, a as people often say, there are no heroes, right? Like there's some awesome stuff in everything. But if you blindly trust the whole story, a lot of it is selling you subscriptions to something. And glasses, nobody needs them. There's a huge amount of freedom in the first time you get less strong glasses and you can see just as well. Like there is a thing in you that just goes, well, crap, right? Like all these things that I didn't even realize that I thought about myself are not true, right? Yeah, there's a deeper, there's a much deeper meaning to it. Yeah, I'm bought in, dude, I'm, I'm bought in. <laughs> you don't, yeah. And if, for kids especially, for ki kids don't need glasses. Like you are screwing your, ch your child's development, putting them in glasses. They're gonna get bullied in school. They're not gonna participate in sports. They're gonna become introverts. You know, that it's, it's just putting a huge amount of psychological and physical burden on a child to go, you need glasses. And the whole thing starts with iPads aren't babysitters. You know what I mean? Like it kills your attention span. Yes, oh my gosh, eyes. yes. I don't want to launch into giant monologues. No, no, dude, I'm, like I said, um, I, I think our, our audience is used to, this is how I think about things because this is why I quit my job. Like I, if I was happy, like, I was totally happy. I'd, I didn't see my manager, but once a month I was in the OR all the time wearing sneakers and, and scrubs. I, I was, you know, had a high level of expertise in what I did, technical ability that doctors relied on me for. Um, but my mission is much greater than that because we have people in our family that have died unnecessarily. So, you know, there, there's like, there's a lot bigger issues to that, you know? Can I throw in one thing? Did you see, and I'm not promoting, I, I, I have a podcast, but it's not, it's not interesting. I did one proper episode, <laughs> Dr. Morris Waxler. Did you see that? The head of FDA surgical division. The dude's 80. He's got like this Einstein white hair all over the place. He's the former head of the FDA surgical devices division, right? Like he is, he's the, he was the man at the FDA that got surgical devices approved, right? He got LASIK approved. He's the man who put the final stamp from the FDA on LASIK. I did an hour chat with him. Holy crap. Holy crap. I couldn't believe that A, he's still alive, that he's not in a ditch somewhere. Like the way he talks and all with references and resources, not just talk. He, he annihilates what the FDA did to get LASIK approved. B basically, just, just a highlight. Wow. He's like, our only medical consequences evaluation was that your eyeballs literally don't fall out of your head. 
and that you can read 2020 on eye chart, which doesn't mean you have good eyesight. No further questions. He's like, you cut the cornea, you cut the nerves, you mess up the integrity of the cornea. We were like, ah, that seems fine. Unreal. And he's like, he's like suicides. He's talking about suicides because of LASIK. He's talking about dry eyes that people have permanently. 30% of people that had LASIK d screwed my perception of, I thought, you know, I trust that organization fairly well, but that was just kind of a mind blowing. Not me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's, you know, I, my, my, my views do not reflect the views of our guests, but I just have to, you know, that's, I, I could be, I could be totally honest. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the show, but I just had to let you know about an awesome new company we're working with called Regenerative Pastures. Regenerative Pastures provides grass-fed meat directly to your door from ranchers who practice regenerative agriculture. This means that the meat you're buying is healthier for the environment because of the way the land and animals are managed to sequester carbon and promote healthy soil biology. And of course, it's healthier for people because this meat contains higher omega-3 fatty acids. They have an incredible selection of grass-fed beef boxes organ meats and organ jerky that are all regeneratively raised. I absolutely love their chuck eye, T-bone, and even their ground beef is delicious. We just add some salt and pepper and it comes out delicious every single time. Supporting regenerative pastures directly supports ranchers financially, helps the environment, and ensures high quality, delicious protein for us to eat. The best part is that when you use the code FATFUEL at checkout, you save a whopping 30% on their subscription box. So head over to regenerativepastures.com and use fat fuel to save on your monthly beef box. All right, let's get back to the show. You know, one of the things that I, before I get to the next question is, um, obviously with children, this is gonna be um, pretty easy, right? Because like they haven't gotten too bad, even though my son has depended on glasses for uh, probably like three years, three or four years now. But the one thing that I do uh, see is that when he takes them off, his eyes hurt. But that's really, would you say, um, and I know, guys, this is not medical advice. Please, it's not medical advice. But um, would you say that, um, that that strain, that pain that he gets, is that something that in your experience um, goes away or lessens with more practice? How many doctors? You know? Uh, I don't know, but he's, I, I got a, my wife will probably know, but it's, it's pretty, pretty bad. Um, and it's also, he's also, um, farsighted too. Oh, uh, yeah. Fixable. Um, th the way to go about this stuff is small changes. You don't throw away the glasses. You don't get rid of the things. First of all, wearing them, doing close up, what I mentioned before is the number one reason stuff got bad. If the first pair of glasses you ever got, if the optometrist if would have would have said always take these things off when you don't need them he would still be at the first pair of glasses and what happens now what you need to do now is for all the close-up stuff he needs lower power glasses like a doctor doctor and a half less for all the close-up right like it'll work the same it'll feel the same you gotta make you have to make a game out of it you have to be chill about it you have to be a, it has to be an exploration that he's curious about right so because if he doesn't want to participate, yeah. it'll never work. But adopt and a half lower for close up, buy him some cool frames, pick him some stuff he likes, like build a story around it, make it an adventure. And then after a month or two or three, when he's used to those for close up, you can make a small reduction to the distance ones, like just a quarter adopter, a tiny bit. He won't even notice the difference. Right. And then three or four months from then, lots of sport activities, outdoor time, distance vision with the slight reduction, three or four months from that, from then, have an eye chart at home, have him check the eye chart. He'll be able to read on the eye chart the same way he could with the stronger glasses four months before. And then you reduce him a quarter doctor again. And then three or four months later, you do the same thing again. Every three to four months, you can make a quarter doctor reduction if he's got good habits without it really making any difference. And eventually he's back to no glasses. Not medical advice. That is awesome. Yes, not this medical advice. This is crazy advice. talk from a dude on the internet. It's not. <laughs> exactly. To another crazy dude on the internet. Um, <laughs> so this one's probably going to come out of left field. But, you know, there's if there's anyone that I can ask, it's it's you. Because, you know, you've, you've walked off the beaten path. So 
have you um, what research if if any have you done into um, you know sun gazing and um, is there anything to it you know because we we found that like at sunrise and sunset we start to like look into like the corners uh, where it's less bright and then we start to go and it's interesting that we've been able to um, see more of the sun and and it's interesting for my wife because my wife has um, issues with uh, her adrenals and when they're really bad she she hates bright light but training that at, at sunrise and sundown for her like just looking in that direction has actually for some reason helped so you know I, I want to just ask anything that you've seen on it at all so sun gazing originally is a Bates method thing dr. William Bates was an optometrist 100 years ago and he was the first dude there's always a guy in the field who's got the right idea and he said 100 years ago he noticed that people need glasses are usually people that spend a lot of time reading 100 years ago there were no screens the only people who needed glasses were scholars and people that were doing a lot of reading fun fact 16th century the only people that needed glasses were monks because the only people who knew how to read and write were monks right like it is obvious right so dr william bates said he came up with all these exercises to relax your eyes. hundred years ago, we didn't have the tools we have today. We didn't understand the biology we do today. I don't recommend anybody do Bates method today. It was just a super great idea hundred years ago to go, hey, maybe this is a problem with too much close up. He was right. And if he would, if his way would have been the way today, there would be no hundred billion dollar industry because we would have just fixed it, mm. but they kicked him out. They kicked them out because obviously, right? Like, don't go against the narrative, right? Like, you end up bad. But one of his ideas was sun gazing. And the whole premise of Bates method was become aware of your eyesight and use your eyesight consciously, especially with distance things. And then he made up a whole bunch of stuff that 100 years ago, right? Like when they used ice picks to do lobotomies. You know, they weren't, <laughs> there, there was a lot of imagination happening and they were trying stuff out. Right idea though, right? So whenever people have done Bates method and the palming and sunning and all that stuff is what helped your eyes was awareness. You're, you're, and the thing with sun gazing is do not look at the sun other than sunset and sunrise. Like you do not want, yeah. it's too bright. You can burn your retina. You can get like, you're going to get serious consequences from staring at a bright sun terrible idea right but sunrise and sunset super relaxing like i lo it's it's not going to fix your myopia because your myopia is because number one screens and number two strong glasses like that's if you want to fix it it's easy i love looking at a sunset it's super relaxing there's something about it that is just it's nice it's nice to look at a sun sunrise it's nice to look at a sunset i don't know anything about adrenals it's not going to fix your eyesight but it's definitely a nice the more you can use your eyesight with awareness and appreciation, the more likely you are to improve it. You know what I mean? Like, because we're just these unconscious animals now. We're just like scrolling through freaking TikTok, right? Like sitting down and asking somebody to spend 15 minutes looking at a sunset, people can't even handle it. And that's the whole idea is like, look at the thing, right? And it helps your, your ciliary muscle relaxes, your brain relaxes, you relax, it's nice. That's a great answer, man. Fantastic answer. Um, and I just totally agree with the whole sentiment. You know, like it's amazing how we can see so much more if we just look up and we're so busy looking down at our screens. You know, I'm like, I try to tell my wife and I notice it's like the moon looks different this week than it looked last week. You know, things like that, that we can just be like, hey, guys, look at the moon tonight. You know, how many people are just walking outside because the sun goes down. And immediately, like, you're, you know, you got your bright lights in your house, your TV's on, and it's just, like, programmed. You know, it's, it's horrifying for me because it seems like every day is exactly the same. And what you mentioned brought something else to mind, which is just that ability to just go outside and just look at the moon on different nights and see where the moon is in its phases and just marvel at that because that's so cool because it's it doesn't change. It's literally you know, the stars where they are tonight, they will be the exact same place next year on this very night, which blows my mind. It's a whole different story. But um, 
Can you talk about a few of the um, other apps or tools that you've um, used besides like, I know that you talk about the vision chart, but you know, on your journey to get back to 2020 vision, I think you've mentioned some, some apps and, and different tools besides the, the videos and resources. Learning to measure your eyesight is the, is the number one thing. It's, it's super empowering. So we talk about all this stuff and somebody, you know, you listen to this and you're like, oh, that's interesting. It's a nice, you know, talking point. The difference between where you're at today and better eyesight is learning how to measure it. Because once you realize that diopters, that you don't understand what they say on their so-called prescription, it's just a distance measurement, right? A hundred divided by how far you can see before there's blur equals diopters. Once you figure that out, and then you figure out that your vision varies, some days you can see better than others, you write it down in a little log. You know, today I could see 50 centimeters. Sorry, I don't, I'm not American. Inch, X inches. <laughs> tomorrow I've seen an, I an inch further. And then you're like, I moved my desk to natural light and now I can see three inches further. Now you're getting context and then you calculate, oh, it's really easy to buy glasses online, right? Like, and you can buy your own glasses. You can buy slightly weaker glasses. That's, that's my number one thing, like the starting point. And as far as apps, since since I've gotten into this and since the phones have become so more, so much more prolific, less apps is what I do. I don't have Instagram on my phone, you know, like d d I had Instagram on my phone. I was hanging out with one of my best friends and she's like, you know what? I feel depressed every time I get off this freaking Instagram thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And I just deleted all that. Right. Like the less stuff is that's good available to me as easy temptation. Yeah. My, my phone is pretty empty. Right. Like I, because then if I want to watch YouTube, I got to be at home. Right. And if I'm not home, there's no YouTube. So it's, that's my thing on apps. And that's another little side story, but it's, I used to have drug problems because I made way too much money. And so obviously, right. Like everybody gets drug problems. So I hey, I'm addiction. there with you, man. I'm uh, nine and a half years sober myself. So I feel you. <laughs> yeah. And so you understand addiction differently than people that have never been addicted to something except for their phone. They're still in denial. I wish they knew they because they don't know. Yeah, they, I wish they knew they haven't gone through the work. It's it's so rewarding. Yeah. And that's that's where we are at. Like we're in a massive cycle of mass addiction that nobody's telling us about. And that sucks. And you can see fixing your eyesight super easy. The, the main thing is you got to get out more like you're you're in the football big time. If you play football, you're not going to have bad eyesight if you manage your screen addiction because watching a ball fly and your visual cortex processing that information the trajectory, how to catch the thing, that's the system working the way it's supposed to, right? Like if you do that on a regular basis and then you watch movies at a TV distance, y your eyesight's gonna be great, always. You know, it's all about use the stuff, don't use so much screens and phone. I sound like an old dude. No, no, I love it. I, I, I honestly, this was an awesome conversation, man. Um, you know, I, I hope that people um, just by looking at the, the the title of this of this episode, I hope they don't just say, ah, this is not for me because I found so much more information besides just the idea that 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 you can fix your own eyesight. I mean, that in, a, in and of itself, it's very powerful, but also just it's it's just another piece of evidence to add to the fact that if you do a little bit of work, if you're a, if you're just a little bit more mindful in life. There's so much more available to you, man. So um, before I let you go, you know, what are there any other projects that you've been working on? And then can you just kind of share with everyone where people can find you online? Um, projects, some real estate stuff and things are going a little crazy right now with currency devaluations and stuff. So I'm still mm. I'm more on the finance side, not super interesting. Um, and then endmyopia.org is the website. It's somewhat tragic because I treat it as a humorous thing like it's not my like main business or income source everything you need on there's free there's like 1200 somewhat articles I've written I've got a big Facebook group and a big forum and a terrible YouTube channel if you treat it as a project you're gonna spend a little bit of time getting into it I think it's super fun but there's no I'm not selling you a quick fix and actually you don't have to buy anything from me it's all everything you need is free that is so awesome man Here's to more people like you, dude, like if we and I, I honestly think like what I, I didn't mention this before, but if we can um, in life, if we can stop looking at 
what's right in front of us because I see such a, a parallel that there which is like your next bill your next um, you know whatever those those bare needs that people are so focused on um, there's much there's a much more rewarding life and it turns out sometimes it also leads to material abundance even though to me that that's not the point but the bottom line is you know I know so many people who have I know people who are you know have in the hundreds of millions that are miserable you know and and it's because of that myopic focus on you know that you know and then either their health has gone to crap or their relationships or both a lot of the time and now they're trying to figure that out and all of them to a to a person say that you know i wish i would have focused on this stuff none of this matters if i didn't have this other stuff so um man it was a it was a great pleasure having you on thank you so much thanks for having me i appreciate it